This game is rated T for Teen. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows. More like Out of the Crapper! Hi folks, this is Double RPG here, and for today's review, we're going to tread back to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, the Ninja Turtles. You had some really great games when I was growing up. Yeah, it's true. I mean, back then, Konami pretty much had a stranglehold on the license, and they produced some really great quality video games for my time, such as the arcade game done back in 1990 for both the arcades and the NES. At least I think the arcade game did uh, come out around that year, or I could be mistaken. And you also had the best beat-em-up of all time, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time. And there were some other really great quality ones like the Manhattan Project, uh, the Hyperstone Highs, as well as some of the ones that were on the Game Boy. And then 2003 comes along with the second animated series. And Konami pretty much has a stranglehold on the license for the first half of the show's run, and then Ubisoft manages to pick it up by the time when the 2007 CGI movie comes out. And for the most part, some of the games were hit and miss, or they were pretty much okay, where some of them were just alright, some of them were pretty good, but most others, they were pretty bad. As bad as, like, reshelled. Yeah, <laughs> not really good quality content right there. And then 2012 comes along, and believe it or not, that show is pretty much rad to the name Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But you figure that with a great TV show that's produced on Nickelodeon, you figure that a video game publisher would have the tendency to show the same respect to that licensed property as they would with the others that developed some really great quality video games back from my time. As a matter of fact, they do not. Instead, we have Activision pretty much giving a stranglehold on the TMNT license, and their stance with video games based on that property has not been the best, as they've been treating us with very much big disrespect and shell shock. Very big disrespect and shell shock, much like how Karai believes that Shredder is still her father. Yeah, I kid you not. Dumb broad. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows is a 3D beat-em-up that was developed by Redfly Studios and published by Activision. This game was originally made available on the Xbox Live Arcade for the Xbox 360 and the PC through Steam with horrendously negative reviews. In fact, the reviews were so negative that Redfly Studios announced that they were delaying the PlayStation Network version in order to give the game more polish in lieu of addressing the many bugs and issues that the game originally had. That alone made me feel much better in knowing that the game was getting the perfect treatment that it deserves. Unfortunately though, the announcement was nothing more than a lie, as while there is some polish over the original release, it still suffers many of the others that it hardly seems like the developer didn't even put in enough effort to fully fix the whole thing. Sit back and refrain from eating any pizza, my friends. We are going to take a long, hard, and in-depth look at the train wreck that is known as Out of the Shadows. Let's take a look. Our game starts off with April being separated from our heroes during the second mission of the game's story. This part of the game acts as a bit of a tutorial to get players familiarized with the general movement of how the game is executed. It doesn't last long though, as the painful and confusing lesson ends with April O'Neil getting kidnapped by Karai, only to be brought into a flashback with where our tale actually begins. As the story begins, you can tell that the whole thing is nothing more than what you would expect from the TV show, as it plays the same shtick of how most turtle games go by in this day and age. I mean, my god! Are we going to get to the point where a developer will try to put in the effort of making a very strong and emotionally gripping tale to implement as the basis of the game's overall goal? How many games are we going to see the same thing happen where the Shredder ends up being the main baddie at the end of each game where no plot is emphasized? Even TMNT on the Game Boy Advance did a much better job than that, and that was a movie license game of all things! Oh. 
Just like most of the games on the console side of the 2003 animated series, the core mechanics of Out of the Shadows is that of a 3D beat-em-up, which borrows heavily on the combat of the Batman Arkham games done by WB Interactive and Rocksteady. Yeah, no pun intended. Your objective in each mission is to go through the levels with linear progression in order to get one step closer to fighting the main boss of each stage or to complete an objective like rescuing April at the end of Stage 3. Enemies vary from foot soldiers, purple dragons, the foot elite, the crane droids, and mousers to name a few. About every minute when moving to a different part of each level, you'll end up fighting against a barrage of enemies that will constantly fight Leo and his brothers. When you fight your enemies, your first problem is going to come into play, the controls. Everything within the execution of the combat is so precise that you have to know exactly what button you are going to push next, or else your combos end up being in vain, or your plan of attacks are completely flawed. When playing the first level of the first mission, I couldn't help but notice that the execution and the attacks were too quick and unbalanced, that I had to quit the mission and undergo the training missions under Master Splinter's tutelage. Guess what? None of the combos or commands work in this mode either. I am looking at the command that the game is telling me to input. Doing a double counter against two enemies wouldn't always work. Executing the special attacks with rotating the right analog stick when combined with the R2 button is still awkward to pull off. And most of the tag team attacks don't always pull through, as your CPU allies won't cooperate. Many of these things makes me even wonder whether or not Redfly Studios was actually going by their word, or they just don't know how to make a game that's in the style of Batman Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. And I haven't even talked about the next major flaw within the game. The camera! You will end up hating this camera for whatever reason when you play this game. The camera is always behind you whenever it is close up to any turtle. It gets somewhat dynamic but still poor when fighting enemies. And it doesn't really help the fact that it makes it more difficult when to know if enemies are behind you or attacking you when the camera is so close to whoever you play as. I got so frustrated when I couldn't even keep a steady visual at my enemies when attacking because that only made the whole experience almost completely worthless. This game is supposed to be in widescreen, not up close and personal. Last, but not least. My other big issue with this game is the actual gameplay that revolves around the growth of each turtle. Yes, there are RPG elements in this game to where it almost makes the whole aspect pointless. Whenever I play a game that has these elements, I want to see there being diversity between the characters with their growth elements, not be recycled. At one point, I play as Leo most often because I always thought his moveset for his trademarked weapons would be awesome. When I took a look at his moveset, I thought the different combos he would have would be enough for me to play as him the most. But when I looked at the others, I noticed that their movesets and upgrades were identical. That's when I realized that playing as your favorite turtle over the other is pointless. No matter who you pick, they all play and grow the same. Their button combinations are identical to the T, most of their movesets are under the same name, and the core mechanics of each character is very benign. At least each character has their own special weapons to use over their trademarked ones, but that's still pointless as none of those hardly work either, as you have to use the R2 button and do that circular motion with the right analog stick to use the special weapons most of the time. In fact, you have to use that all the time for the special weapons, so that also made it completely pointless. Gameplay-wise, I was very disappointed in the PSN version's execution that it makes the whole experience when playing the four chapters of the main story very unbearable. Now to be fair, there are some unique aspects that I actually found to be very enjoyable, such as creating new weapons for each turtle like Leo having a staff made out of his two katana blades, Donnie having a gravity gauntlet, Mikey having the Kasari Gama like in the 2012 show, and Raph having some iron fists to do more damage. Another thing is that some of the movesets can actually be customized to fit your choosing for each character, and some of the techniques that they have actually reflect their personalities, so there is at least some diversity in the growth feature, if not all of it. Perhaps the coolest thing about the moves is that you can cooperate with the other turtles if they are CPUs or played with other people either local or online multiplayer to pull off some insane combination KOs such as a Shell Shock. It becomes somewhat fun when you can use the power of teamwork to pull off some insane finishers to grasp more experience points. But good luck trying to do that by yourself, as they will never work half the time. Sadly, some of the great qualities of this game do not overshadow the bad qualities because of the poor execution, but I will say that you will get more enjoyment out of this than reshell, and that is saying a lot right there. Take it. Shell shot. Ow! 
Since Out of the Shadows is the first of the three games done by Activision to cash in on the TMNT license, one would think that this game is based on the 2012 CGI cartoon on Nickelodeon. In a sense, it is based on that show, but the presentation is the complete opposite. What I mean is that the visuals present the game in a more realistic manner rather than the cartoonish approach that the show is currently going for right now. This in turn may actually please some people who don't fully favor the visuals of the cartoon, but I see it being good either way. As you start up the game, you'll notice that T-U-R-T-L-E Power from Partners in Crime plays in the background. You know, the ending theme to the first live-action film from 1990, and it's probably the only thing that Out of the Shadows got right. Too bad you're led into a game that gives you a lukewarm welcome. Lousy crooks. Now, let us get a bit more serious here and talk about the presentation of each level. I will give the game the benefit of the doubt and say that the graphics for each level looks very dark and grim. That harkens back to the comics. And the characters portrayed in the realistic side actually comes off being somewhat decent for a download game. So, I guess they got what they were going for. In the four levels, you'll come across the rooftops and streets of NYC, an abandoned factory where Baxter Stockman creates his Mausers, the Shredder's hideout where the Foot Clan are at his command, and the basement portions of the Krang's base at TCRI. As you progress through the levels, you'll come across hordes of Foot Soldiers, Purple Dragons, Mausers, and Krang Droids. Each side sort of gives some diversity between the different mobs, but their constant appearances and lack of diverse enemy types makes the enemy count very shallow and repetitive. Let us not forget that certain parts of each level will give you bonus objectives to complete in order to gain bigger experience points, like doing turtle power knockouts, counter knockouts, or even stealth KOs. The problem is that the objectives are somewhat very hard to pull off because of your AI companions getting in your way, or they might try to do what you just did, just to make things even more complicated. I had a hard time trying to finish off some of the side objectives because the AI can be so freaking dumb in most cases. Even in combat they are dumb half of the time, as you will end up doing most of the dirty work with whoever you control. Speaking of fighting, this game has four bosses throughout the whole deal, and for a downloadable title, that is pathetic. Your first boss is against Karai, the second is the Cerberus Mouser at the end of Chapter 2. The third and fourth chapter has you fighting off against Oroku Saki, with the last fight giving him two different forms. The problem with each boss fight is that each fight is very frustrating and not fun to go up against. Some bosses were a big pain in the shell that I had to restart them over, at least two to three times. Why are they bad? Because they usually have the backup to give you a hard time, and it doesn't really help the fact that each boss or enemy doesn't have the emphasis of trial and error to make it fun to duke it out with them. If there was a pattern and a certain level of difficulty to take down the boss, as well as there being polish in the controls, these probably would have benefited the game much more. But nope, it's all mindless button mashing, and random moves coming from your foes, which is more the fault of bad programming. Now, let us shift gears and discuss the main modes of this game. The campaign mode has you playing the four chapters of the main story, either in single player, local, or online co-op. Survival mode has you playing the turtles in surviving against a constant barrage of enemies to see how far you can stay on your toes. The arcade cabinet has you playing all the levels, but they are recreated to give it the arcade feeling of a side-scrolling beat-em-up. It sounds good on paper, but that still doesn't address the issues of the frustrating enemy AI and glitches that are in plain sight. The dojo mode is the training session where you can learn the basics in the movesets and to learn how to pull off each turtle's special moves. The fridge allows you to view the concept art of the game's main assets. In order to view them, you have to go through the levels of the main campaign by searching every corner nook and cranny until you find comics that have the cover art of the first issue of the 1984 comic. If you are looking for replay value to view all the concept art in the game, then this is your one-way ticket as there is hardly any at all. Finally, Donnie's Workshop is where you can spend ability points from the levels you gain to create each turtle's unique weapons that I mentioned from before. One last thing I want to go back and touch base upon is the level design. Everything is created using the Unreal Engine 3, and that outdated engine still plays a big role in many games as of right now. I really don't know why Redfly Studios didn't create a new engine from scratch to fit all consoles, because the Unreal Engine is mostly meant for PCs, not consoles! I'm serious! Every time when you look at the background when moving forward, there are glitches within the visuals that occur. I can hardly believe that though the game's dark and grim tone looks really good, but it's completely ruined by the constant glitches and bugs that occur within the levels. Like this cop. Or the enemy weapons after they are defeated. Or even your teammates. Or even some of the levels where there is no environment at all. 
Just don't get your hopes up too much if you're expecting something great to come out of the presentation, because most of what I just told you will give you an eyesore because of its unpolished look. Sadness! Finale? What finale? I already just told you what happens within the game as there is hardly a story to be told. You make it to the end where the Krang's hideout is, fight Shredder in both his forms, and that's it. No creativity or thought whatsoever. Case closed, next segment. The only bonus content you'll get out of this game is finding the hidden comic books in each level to unlock the different pieces of the concept art. After that, there isn't anything more to get. However, there is an easter egg that I guess is worth showing. During the gameplay, you can switch the colors of the turtles' headbands to full red that harkens back to their original appearance within the comics and the first five issues of the TMNT storyline from IDW. To do this during the actual gameplay and in dojo practice mode, Hold down the R2 button and press triangle, X, circle, circle, X, triangle, X, circle, circle, and X. By the time when you select your next mission or training stage with any turtle, you can toggle between the headband colors if you want them to look how they are from the traditional sense or to make them look like their original appearance in the original comics. It's a nice touch, but that's the only other bonus you'll get out of this. Why is it that games that had potential to be good end up getting the short end of the stick, with creating a multitude of errors and hardly any good quality assurance, or an extraneous amount of collectibles for us to enjoy? Rotten Crooks? I tried to give Out of the Shadows the benefit of the doubt with the PSN version, but the lie that Redfly Studios and Activision made has made me a downer with thinking that this version would be the best one of the bunch. Ironically, it is with some better polish, but none of the other problems were addressed with promise as that is what it should have been. Granted, it is a far more enjoyable game than Reshelled, but the game length, content, presentation, and gameplay all suffer shell shock, and not in a good way. Everything that seems like it goes in the right direction always ends up getting shafted with major flaws. If you want a good TMNT game to go by that is part of the 2012 show, then stick with the 3DS version of the game that's based on the same name because it was far more enjoyable. Now, I guess we can say that this game also suffers from what I'd like to call Turtles in Time Syndrome. This means that every game that tries to capitalize on the success of the best beat-em-up ever made always falls flat on its face. Even the 3DS game I mentioned is guilty of that fact, but it has certain appeal. Until the day comes where we get a TMNT game of AAA quality that has been long overdue, your best choice is to stay away from this game if you are not a fan of the franchise. If you are, then you will probably get in some enjoyment when it comes to the online gameplay, as it is one of the few things that this game gets right. Other than that, I declare that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows is a game that you should definitely skip. It was a seldom effort by Redfly Studios to do the game right, but this should tell Activision that quality over quantity is truly the way to go. episode so if you like what you saw then be sure to rate that video as well as leaving your positive and negative feedback down in the comments and also be sure to hit that subscribe button underneath that video as more support from you guys means that more content is coming from me in the future that you won't even find anywhere else but seriously though I'm just I'm really bummed that Activision just produced us a really crappy video game at this moment based on my favorite childhood heroes now, if there was only another ninja video game, or another video game that could just come out all of a sudden to where it could possibly cheer me up, but seriously, what could that one game be?
Could that be what I think it is? Oh my god, it's gotta be. It's gotta be! No. No! everyone, thanks for watching! This review was a follow-up to my review of Turtles in Time Reshelled that I did back almost five years ago. <laughs> damn man, I feel old for that video being out that long. If you want to see the two-part episode on YouTube, give it a click via the annotation. Also, be sure to check out my last review that I did, which is right here. Go watch either of them, as the views will definitely help. Seriously, do it! You won't be disappointed, as they were pretty good. Anyway, I gotta go. Until next time, this is Double RPG saying Godspeed and Game On Gamers. See you next time.